This is CyberSound, your simplified and fundamentals focused source for all things cybersecurity. Welcome to CyberSound. I'm your host, Jason Pufal, uh, joined by Michael Grandy and Steve Maresca today. Hey there. Uh, and we've got Tony Nicolaitis, uh, Chief Commercial Officer with Origin Wireless. Welcome, Tony. Thanks, guys. Great being here. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for thanks for reaching out. I'm looking forward to chatting about it. So it's we usually talk things that are like purely sort of information and cybersecurity. This probably falls. You, and you correct me if I'm wrong. Falls a little bit more maybe into the physical security space. I think we're going to chat around that today. Sure. Sure. So uh, if you could then give us a give us a little sense of who Origin Wireless is, uh, kind of what your your core business model is. Absolutely. So Origin uh, Wireless has been around since 2012, um, and uh, the technology uh, foundationally uh, was started at the University of Maryland by Dr. Ray Liu, and um, from 2012 to 2019, about really uh, foundationally really getting the technology where it needed to be and discovering what it can do. And then after that, um, you know, Spencer made our CEO was on board. I came on board and now we're starting to commercialize. So, uh, we're based in Rockville, Maryland, just North of Washington, DC. And basically what is, what is origin wireless? We're a team of 50. Um, and, um, uh, basically the technology is as long as Wi-Fi is in a space, as we know, Wi-Fi is ubiquitous. It's everywhere now. Elon Musk is going to give us, you know, a Starlink Wi-Fi everywhere, right? As long as there is a Wi-Fi signal, what our technology can do is as bodies move through Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi signals are disrupted, like a body of water almost, and we can uh, quantify and contextualize that disruption to look at things like uh, macro motion, you know, doing jumping jacks, running, uh, all the way down to micro motion, breathing. Um, you know, so you're uh, able to understand what's going on in a space by just having Wi-Fi in that space and using our technology to understand. All right, so I'm going to kick it off because I do have a I have a couple of questions probably right out of the gate. Uh, my but my first one probably is: Do you consider this to be supplemental to sort of video cameras and some of the tip traditional physical security things that people are familiar with? Uh, replacement for like where do you where do you feel this fits best? Yeah, it's a great question. So, uh, residential and small and medium business is one of our four verticals. A um, very important, huge vertical. Uh, our biggest investor is the largest uh, security company in Europe, number two to ADT. Um, and so, it's a, it, that's kind of a loaded question. You look at Ring, <laughs> right, Jason? Ring has done an outstanding job of per, uh, perimeter security, right outside your door. We have uh, uh, cameras around your house, but when you get inside the house, okay, that's where indoor cameras are becoming less and less uh, wanted by customers. Uh, we think two out of 10 and shrinking, uh, hacks and so forth that happen, that's where we fit in. So we are, we complete the puzzle of physical security, Jason. We complete the, 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 the puzzle of having perimeter outside with cameras and then us inside to make sure verify human presence with no wearables needed, no cameras needed, so forth. Okay. So more replacement inside, and that's where we can kind of make sure that, the, like again, the puzzle is complete. Right. So are you using cameras inside in any capacity, like targeting, selective monitoring while they're off all of the time unless movement is detected in a hot area or something like that? No, we we use no cameras. It's strictly the Wi-Fi signals that Verizon, Comcast, whoever you sure. have in the house, it's it's just purely the Wi-Fi signal. It's all we need. So uh, one of the questions I had is is relating to sort of the variety. Let's just take small business and residential use cases. Um, you've got such a wide variety of of vendors in that space. You talked about ISPs that will give you a cable box that will also deploy wireless. You've got home networks. Are there any restrictions on the type of infrastructure that Origin needs to run? You know, where does it sit? Does it sit sort of on an application layer somewhere in the wireless controller? Yeah, so depending on the use case, we have a multiple, we have four different general topologies, but ISP is another one of our four verticals, right? Okay. So we sit in the Wi-Fi chip in the router or in the uh, in the security hub, 
we sit as a, as a firmware in the Wi-Fi chip. So whoever the Wi-Fi chip is, we sit a firmware on top of that. Uh, if you're not in that particular case, are you deploying sensors physically spread throughout a, uh, a space just to be able to listen and observe interference patterns and things of that variety? So let's talk about the ISP use case. Sure. Uh, you have a router. Our technology is on there. I live in, north, in the Northeast here, so I've got Fios. Verizon was our first customer. Um, and so the router has what they call home awareness is the product. And that router will create, will ping all the connected devices around the house and create these uh, sensing zones. Okay. So that, and those, those, those um, connected devices do not need our tech on them. It's just the router that creates these sensing zones. And that's the way you under, and once a, uh, uh, some, somebody uh, enters that sensing zone, we know that there's somebody there. So no other sensors needed, none. So, so you're really then what we're looking for is, as a consumer potentially is a an, an origin aware or I think you just refer to it as as home awareness. Is that what you said? That's Verizon's. That's particularly okay. Verizon's okay. product. That's what they call it. The FiOS um, uh, a Verizon pro origin product in, in in their routers. Gotcha. Okay. What are the applications for it? Just you know to give a a sense of what that looks like. Okay. So let's talk about that. That's great. We'll talk about the four verticals if it's okay. Let's talk sure, about. Sure the ISP vertical. The ISP vertical right now, we're, we've launched Verizon, we're launching Deutsche Telekom in Europe, right? We're in the process of, and then Deutsche Telekom, as we know, owns T-Mobile that'll come in after that. So what are they doing in general? They are going for uh, um, a, um, a product that just like Verizon right now, if you get home awareness, you have this blue orb that you can see that they've done a lot of research on their app. And as the blue orb shrinks or gets nothing, there's not, nothing going on in your house. As the blue orb grows, you know there's a lot more activity in your house. So right now, it's just a matter of a visualization of the activity in your house. Why do they like that? They can start to talk to their customers about, hey, are your kids supposed to be home or not? Or is there supposed to be activity during, your, in, in, during this time in your house? You can check that uh, with that. Where the ISPs want to go is more into that security realm right into that residential security. Why would they want to do that? First, we know Comcast and Xfinity do that already, but um, these ISPs want to become more relevant to their customers outside of just Wi-Fi, which is now becoming uh, much more pressurized as we know. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, kind of a race at the bottom. You know what I mean? Like it's not just about speeds and fees. They want to be about something else to become stickier to their customers. So eventually they're all going to get to that place is more residential security. Okay, so that's the ISP space. The actual security space, like let's say we're launching right now with Verishore in Europe, we're launching with Alarm.com in the US. We are supplementing their system. For example, in what we call the CU, the central unit unit in, in, in Verishore, we're there in their Wi-Fi chip. So when a sensor is broken, a door sensor, a window sensor, or even their camera, for example, we were just talking about, notices somebody, we wake up, verify human presence, right? And then shut back down. Um, and so we're, we're kind of complimenting them. Why? In Europe, and it's coming to the US, there's heavy fines if police are called to your house and it's a false alarm. By the way, in the US, Pittsburgh, Las Vegas, Milwaukee are no longer responding to alarms because of the false alarm rate, right? Because today when you call ADT and you're, we're doing this podcast and your phone rings, and it's ADT saying, hey, there's uh, we sense a, a break-in in your house. Do you want us to send the police? You're not home. What do you know whether it's there or not? They have no idea about verified human presence. That's what we supply is elimination of false alarms and verified human presence. Let me stop there with the first two critical ones. We'll talk about the other two in a okay. second. But let me stop there for the use cases that you were asking about for questions. Sure. I mean, I, I see immediate applications beyond what you articulate in terms of just the pulsing blue sphere, right? There are lots of folks who care about home automation and wiring up with thermostats and other elements, you know, lights and things like that. Are there other trajectories beyond that have been considered in that regard? Yes. So let's talk about the third. Uh, there's four, I said, the third uh, uh, vertical, which we call smart spaces or IoT. So we are working with the largest HVAC manufacturer in the world. I'm not going to name their name for smart thermostats. Again, I've got an, an ECOB, I don't know if you guys do or not, but my ECOB has these PIR sensors, these dumb sensors that you got to put around the house. Yep. Well, I, 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 those PIRs, if you've been in, a, in an office that has a PIR, sometimes you got to do this to get your <laughs> license because it loses you. 
we won't lose you, right? Again, we can see you just doing the remote in the house. We can see you falling asleep in the house and we'll know you don't need all those extra sensors overall, as long as you have our sensor in smart thermostats. We've also launched already, and for legal reasons, I can't tell you their name, but they are the largest bulb manufacturer in the world. Uh, and you can go buy them anywhere. Um, and so you get two bulbs, uh, you put them in a room with two lamps, and it creates its own sensing zone. You don't need a you don't need a um, a router or anything. And once uh, uh, somebody br steps into that zone, within a half a second, we turn on the lights, and then you can set what to turn the lights off. Okay. And there are many more kitchen appliances. Uh, there are many more use cases that we are looking at in the smart space area. So that's the third. Uh, and the fourth, we're not really attacking just yet, is health tech, elderly monitoring, fall detection. That's something we're looking at in the future because that does require some more sensors that the other three verticals do not. The, the other three verticals do not require any sensors. Okay, there you go. So there are other trajectories to answer your question. Sure. And there's overlap clearly between all of those. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so the last item, just real quick, the additional sensors, you were alluding to breath sensing and things of that variety. I imagine you need higher fidelity for that type of thing, and that's what you were meaning with the, yeah, yeah, you're the gonna need, space. That's right. You're going to need... Uh, what we call higher frequency pinging between yep. Yep. Uh, yep. the Wi-Fi chip and that sensor uh, to make sure that we're getting at the highest fidelity possible. So when you get in that space, you better be it better be right. So uh, we are we are getting into that space. We can demo fall detection. We've demoed it now for two years, but to commercialize it, it's a different story. So uh, elderly monitoring is something we're very serious about. We'll get into here and mm -hmm. over the next uh, twelve months. I, I, something came to mind as you were going through all those use cases, but I, you know, I, I think you, you probably have successfully navigated it, which I, I don't know that there's any consent issues that you have to sort of navigate uh, properly when, when you're, you're talking about some of this, you know, based on specific information or private information or right. you know, yeah. presence or anything like that. Yeah, and, but, I mean, privacy obviously is getting yeah. to be a, a, a much more serious topic even here yeah. locally, right? So how do you navigate that and what, what are the concerns? Yeah. Um, all I can say is we've already passed four, four letters, GDPR in Europe. So if you could pass that, you can do anything, right? So, but to, to answer your question in all seriousness, um, we don't identify anybody. Right. Uh, all we know is there's activity in the space. All we know is there's verified human presence in the space. We don't identify anyone. Um, that's number one. And B, I mean, we're talking about cybersecurity, all of our processing, all our all of our processes are done on the edge. We have no cloud component in the origin uh, infrastructure. It's all done on the edge. So the data is pretty private, but even that data is vanilla data. We just know there's verified human presence. Sure. I, I, it, I'm, so I'll admit, I walked into this thinking a little bit more about sort of traditional physical security than some of the applications that you talked about. Um, I'm, I'm personally really interested in the, how do you use technology to, provide assistive services to people. Uh, the idea of you getting into that sort of medical space to be able to do some detections for, you know, elderly folks at risk is hugely important, right? I, I think there's so much resistance from a lot of people to wearing devices or to have, to feel like they're being monitored by something that's on their person. And if you can provide some of that in a way that feels less intrusive, uh, I mean, that, that's a fascinating use case and one that, that, that I'll pay a lot of attention to. I'm actually, I, I, I'm really intrigued by that. Jason, I mean, it's, uh, look, uh, our, the elderly uh, in the world today want to uh, age independently. My parents right. live with, uh, so is my mother-in-law, right? So um, they want to be able to do their thing. So you're going to need technology like this in the future where you don't have to charge a wearable wear or wear a wearable, like you're saying, to do that. So uh, we think our technology fits perfectly. But again, to commercialize, that is a different story. Um, and we want to make sure we do it correctly and, and right. And that's it, we're, we're, it's happening over time. So that's why we're focused on ISPs. It's immediate. We're focused on uh, residential security, small and medium business, and that smart space. Because again, we're, as we're getting, as we're becoming, going smart up to uh, start up to scale up, then we're going to need the revenue to keep the business right. going. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I share Jason's interest in those peripheral non information yeah. security fields. But I do have another question about physical security. One of the biggest issues with Wi Fi, of course, is the bleed through effects through building perimeters that I imagine could be perceived as a benefit to you. 
through wall sensing and things of that variety. Are you doing oh, any yeah. of that? Yeah, I mean, right now it'll go through. If I'm hearing your question right, it'll go through walls. It'll stay in the house because you're pinging those devices that are in the house. It won't go out of the house. You know what I mean? So you're not going to have false alarms that way. Um, and so it stays in the house and uh, through walls, and it, it's, it gives you whole home coverage. For you to get whole home coverage, think about that. Let's think of the camera use case. How many cameras do you need? My God, yeah. you're gonna, I'm not on. Too many. Yeah. No one's going to do that. No, no one does. If uh, if you want to put sensors on every one in PIRs, it's it's just not something that right. you do. So this allows you to get whole home coverage. Or okay, maybe it's not every single part of the home, but it's fine. Um, much greater than what you have today. Uh, and through walls and everywhere else to get to what you need. I hope that answers your question. It, it does. And, and also thinking about the PIR sensors, I mean, they're, they're attacked and defeated regularly in the SMB space and physical penetration tests and uh, criminal penetration of a building. You know, all you need is a can of air to really trick them okay. sometimes. So uh, there's a huge benefit to not be, I don't know, handicapped by that particular technology deficiency. I, I, I really think there's some interesting things there really to augment traditional security as well, just from door perimeter entry security. And people don't think about residential, small, medium business, especially residential. It, it is, um, you know, in the US alone last year, it was $17 billion, same massive market. You put the rest of the globe, as we go over the next couple of years, it'll be a hundred billion. Um, this is a massive market that not a lot of people talk about, but in the world we, where we are today, more and more people are gonna want it. Oh, by the way, in the US, 52% of people have security. So it's still a market that has a lot of growth to be had with renters, with apartments, with, you know, people don't have security today because I can't put holes in my walls, you know? So there's a lot of opportunity for us. Well, I mean, even as you were talking, you know, I've got kids. I love to know, you know, when they're home, uh, how many of them are home because <laughs> they're all, you know, we're pretty close to, to school. So they're always bringing friends over. I mean, that's a, that's a simple and sort of useful peace of mind use case. I would imagine Airbnbs and VRBOs and all these other, yeah. you know, called transient places where they just want to know, like, did my guests arrive? You know, how many, potentially how many people are there? They said they'd bring four. Does it seem like it's more? <laughs> like, it, it gives you a lot of awareness. By the way, you know, Airbnb has eliminated indoor cameras, right? You saw that last yeah, year. Yeah. There indoor cameras in there. So we fit perfectly in there. So, yeah. I mean, where you guys are going uh, is, I don't even need to say, you're taking me there. That's exactly <laughs> what you're saying. Uh, so you, you, you mentioned the potential growth of the market, right? The, that there's, there's a lot of room to move there. Um, everybody wants to buy into an ecosystem. If, if there was a desire, because I think you spoke about the, the, the bulbs, you spoke about a variety of other internal, uh, space capabilities. How are you going to market or or what will it look like as a consumer to be able to potentially add more devices to get more That's delivery? Right. That's right. So um, you don't really, so let's talk about the business model because Jason, you asked about that earlier and I yep. didn't talk about it. The business model for us uh, varies. Remember, we go B2B. So really that Verizon or that uh, uh, Verisure, the customer that we're selling to, they market to technology, hmm. Right. So, and they market in their verticals to their customers. They name the technology, Verizon named it Home Awareness. Sure. Um, you know, and so they, 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 they market and name it and drive it within their, their base. So uh, we don't sell, we are a software company. We don't sell any hardware whatsoever. Um, so we, um, they, whatever hardware they have, they sell, but they, they put our software into their, yep. Uh, and they're, they're their Wi-Fi chip, and then they have our added functionality. So um, they market for us. And if I want you know, a light to turn on because I've come home, or the heat to go up because I've arrived, do you are you licensing then to you know the the nests of the world? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. okay. We license to them. They use our technology, and frankly, if nobody knows who we are and it goes through this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. even better. Yeah. So happy with that. No problem. Yeah. They're, they're going to know who you are simply because of the podcast. Yeah, otherwise you you're invisible. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's why I'm here. I knew it. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I mean, I, we're kind of up, kind of coming up against time here. Any follow-ups that you guys wanted to add or? Nope. No. Yeah. Uh, any, great. Tony, any parting words for you? Anything that we didn't cover that you really hoped you'd get an opportunity to speak about? No, again, you guys, this is a, a unique podcast because you guys fed me the use cases. You guys went immediately there. So I thank you very much for 
thinking about that, that's great. Uh, anybody that wants to visit our website, because that's really our top of our funnel, so to speak, yep. uh, originwirelessai.com. Uh, and um, and uh, email me at tony.nicolaitis at originwirelessai.com. And uh, I really appreciate the time today, guys. It really it was a great, uh, great couple minutes. Yeah, and we'll put your, we'll make sure that your last name is clearly in the uh, show notes because Nicolaitis is not, it doesn't quite, quite look the way it sounds. So uh, people will get yes. that there. So. Very great, very great. <laughs> great. Uh, hey, it was, it was a pleasure. I appreciate coming on. Um, I appreciate sharing a whole bunch of these use cases. Uh, frankly, it was, an ed- it was educational for me because I, I came in naively thinking about a pretty narrow <laughs> space. Uh, and I see that you're thinking about a whole whole variety of areas. So I, I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate Thanks, you. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. We'd love to hear your feedback. Feel free to get in touch at Vancord on LinkedIn. And remember, stay vigilant, stay resilient. This has been CyberSound.